and employment in this population of young uh, subjects. <coughs> Just a few words about MRI studies that have actually driven the research in the field over the past two decades. And the, the important concept, the only concept I would like to stress today is that Cognitive dysfunction, exactly as other symptoms of the, of the disease, is the consequence of inflammation in the brain, of lesion in the brain, of neurodegeneration in the brain, and of brain atrophy, and also uh, the damage that occurs outside the macroscopic lesions in the so-called normal appearing brain tissue. So, uh, the good news coming from functional MRI study is that brain can react to brain damage and can compensate due to brain plasticity. This is a very old concept that functional MRI study have uh, the ability to show in vivo. And this is, among many other, an Italian study uh, you can see that MS patients performing uh, the PASAT, that is a cognitive task of attention and information processing speed, do activate more brain as compared with healthy controls. And this is interpreted as a compensatory mechanism that allows the subjects to perform normally despite brain pathology. So this is a very exciting concept. And the other uh, very important concept is, is that of cognitive reserve, which is this. So patients with greater intellectual enrichment have a greater cognitive reserve that is a protective factor against cognitive impairment. Intellectual enrichment is a quite complex concept involving genetic and environmental aspects, the IQ, the intelligence of the subject, but also the educational level, but also the richness of lifetime environmental experience, reading, active life, active mental activity. So this provides, of course, scope for additional therapeutic approaches based on enhancement of intellectual enrichment. And in fact, some recent research in multiple sclerosis seem to document that this theory fits in MS. And as you can see in the upper portion of the slide, patients with a greater cognitive reserve and uh, greater intellectual enrichment are able to perform normally despite brain, brain atrophy as compared with patients with lower cognitive reserve or normal cognitive reserve. So the second issue, the approaches to the assessment of cognitive impairment in everyday practice, given uh, the fact that it is uh, so frequent and important, it is extremely important to integrate cognitive assessment in our everyday approach to the patient. So briefly, uh, in everyday practice, we can use uh, not uh, brief, not time consuming, uh, well validated screening instruments. There is no definitive consensus among the optimal instruments. In my experience, I have to say that we use the single digit modality test, but there are many other approaches. And this serves to identify the subjects that require a more detailed examination. Uh, through, for instance, the so-called brief batteries or intermediate length batteries. And you perhaps have heard about the brief repeatable battery, Reus battery, that uh, is widely used in research and also in clinical trials. And the other battery is the McFins. So I have to mention this test, the PASAT, because it is incorporated to represent cognition in this new scale of disability, relatively new, the MSFC, that uh, is used in clinical trials, in therapeutic trials, also recent trials, is a task of information processing speed and attention 
and subject uh, listens uh, from uh, a tape a series of digits and has to sum each digit to the previous one. It's quite a challenging task, even for healthy people, and I have to say not well accepted from both the patients and the assessors. Perhaps a better alternative is this single digit modalities test. It is used in the oral version. Is, uh, it requires all, only five minutes approximately. The subject looks at the key in the upper portion of the sheet and has to tell as quickly as possible the digit that corresponds to each symbol. So we have one, then we have five, then we have two, and so on, and so on. So the other approach is the use of a questionnaire with the patient and possibly the caregiver. The, the most well-validated is this MS Neuropsychological Screening Questionnaire, or MSNQ, that, as you can see, consists of 15 simple questions, items, dealing with the performance of the subject in everyday life, and you can see that it has a reasonable level of sensitivity. And the last approach, of course, is that of treatment strategies. I have to say that the evidence is surprisingly limited in the field and that there is no evidence completely evidence-based strategy, no uh, approved drug in the market. So as I mentioned yesterday, there is to me a great responsibility for the scientific community in the next few years to try to develop effective strategies uh, combining experience and in a coordinated uh, cooperative effort. However, first of all, I would like, of course, the approaches are based on pharmacological strategies and uh, cognitive behavioral rehabilitation strategies that can be, of course, combined. Starting with drugs, I would like to stress that uh, it's obvious that the, the, the important thing is to treat the patient with available disease-modifying drugs and possibly newer and more effective drugs that are coming in, in, into the market. This is why disease-modifying drugs have the potential to reduce inflammation in the brain, to reduce the, the burden of lesions, to reduce the progression of atrophy, all elements that are closely associated, as I told you, with cognitive impairment. And this is just the latest uh, uh, result. This is a trial on clinically isolated syndromes with interferon beta 1b. And uh, there was a positive effect and improvement indeed of the passive performance in patients who were treated early as soon uh, as they had the first clinical, uh, clinical attack compared with patients with a delayed treatment. So surprisingly uh, little attention in, has been dedicated in general in uh, clinical trials to the cognitive outcome, but still most of these studies have shown at least some positive effects on the cognitive outcome of the patient. And in principle, it's clear that as for other clinical outcomes, as for physical disability, uh, the best strategy to prevent cognitive impairment or, or to maintain a normal cognitive functioning is early treatment of the patients. And from now on, it is essential that cognition is taken into account as an important outcome in future trials, therapeutic trials. Um, there have been also a few trials, small trials, pilot trials, I have to say, with uh, drugs used for the treatment of fatigue. This is why fatigue is often associated with cognitive dysfunction. There could be also a mental component or cognitive component of fatigue. Uh, most of the studies have been negative. There are some 
very, very preliminary results in a small study with the new agent, modafinil, that is not on the market for MS. And uh, what about the enhanced psychostimulants? There are some preliminary results with methylphenidate and L-amphetamine, but this drug should be used not in clinical practice, I would like to stress, only in the context of clinical trials. And uh, there have been some attempts to use uh, a few Alzheimer's drugs, uh, mostly uh, inhibitors of acetylconyl esterase. Um, and controversial um, results have been obtained with donepezil. Uh, one trial is positive, the second the larger trial is negative. However, the drug is well, relatively well tolerated by MS patients and there may be quite interpatient variability in response since uh, post-hoc analysis showed, even in the negative trial, that patients with more severe memory deficits did improve significantly. So perhaps the story is not at its, hand, at its end. Finally, cognitive rehabilitation. Uh, the first concept I would like to stress is that uh, our aim is not improving the performance of the patient on, on a cognitive task, never mind of this, but it is improving his or her activity and participation or maintaining his or her level of activity and participation in life. As your president this morning has told in her extremely impressive talk, the aim again is to help subjects to live the best life they can. So the key principles are uh, the general uh, principle in rehabilitation. We can focus on the restoration that is the restitution or partial or complete of an impaired function through the therapy for instance, through training exercise. And we have now uh, several computer-assisted training for different cognitive functions that can be used easily by the patient with the minimum instructions at home. Or we can focus on uh, uh, compensation uh, using uh, uh, residual functions for compensatory strategies such as coping strategies and we can uh, figure out uh, a series of adaptations and accommodations to be implemented uh, at home and at work or at school for children. So in the absence of uh, firm evidence, definitive evidence, I would like to stress uh, a few points. It's important to individualize the approach uh, targeting the specific needs of the patient, involving family members um, and other significant persons. For instance, we have <coughs> a great commitment with uh, the children cohort. It's important to involve uh, of course, teachers at school, to use a multidisciplinary approach involving the neuropsychologist, and the uh, occupational therapist, uh, and so on, and uh, mm, to have a, a complete uh, assessment uh, uh, of the patient status, addressing the possible comorbidities and factors that can worsen cognitive performance for instance, very simply side effects of treatment that can be managed, uh, fatigue, depression, and also encouraging uh, a healthy and active lifestyle. We know that sleep disturbances or alcohol abuse have a detrimental effect on memory and cognitive function in general. Um, it's extremely important to speak with our patient and to explain the situation. Information, again, is fundamental. When I was young, uh, we, we were in the position to deny uh, the presence of cognitive dysfunction in MS. And this can generate a lot of confusion and frustration in the patient who does exper experience problems in his or her life.